Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. Self-Proclaimed Power Man. And I'm here at my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, guys. Now, today, uh, we got an interesting show. We uh, He wrote a book called Simple Medicine, and um, one of the taglines is, no more Google searches. Um, he's, uh, he's an internal medicine doctor, and he's calling from Mansfield, Ohio. And it's um, I guess he's going to talk to us about some of the some of the simple things that um, with medicine, not making it so complicated and all that. So the average person can understand. Um, please welcome Dr. Rob Barquet Jr. to the show. So, Dr. Rob, tell us about tell us about the book and tell us about uh, simple medicine. And you said no more Google searches. Yes, it's um, it seems anymore. Well, I've been in. Um, private practice for 30 years now internal medicine okay. and I've seen a lot of the uh, changes that have gone on in the medical world and I think the main difference these days with patients is they want instant gratification yeah so they have a problem or complaint and instantly go to Google yeah mm-hmm. and they come into the office actually tell me what their diagnosis is or their hair is on fire because they've got three days to live because that's what Google said. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I am usually there to, and calm the fears of the patient because it's not usually as bad as it is. Mm -hmm. Try them, get them to uh, actually tell me what their problem is versus the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a double-edged sword. I love the patient. I wrote the book to increase patient education and literacy because it's been proven that the more literate the patient is, the better the health outcomes is for that patient. Yeah. So I wanted to write down in common layman's terms, the most common medical problems and complaints for uh, what I've seen over the 30 years. And it's kind of been a, a cliff note version, everything short, sweet, back. And from what my patients and everyone's told me it's been a pretty easy and quick read and it's the only medical uh reference guide for patients so so, so what are some of the problems go back to it so what are some of the problems uh you're talking about well before you answer that question i can completely you know agree with you i work in the hospital on the observation unit and most of our patients just got their diagnosis for the first time then they're on their phones and finding out what's going on instead of asking the nurses <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, and it and you know Google is it it it's tough. I mean, I sometimes go to it, and I'll go to you know WebMD or the Mayo Clinic, and I, and it takes me everywhere. It really doesn't give me the answer even I'm looking for. Right. Yeah. So that. You yeah. know, it's upsetting for me also. So I, I'm like, I agree geez. with that, too, because I ran a couple of different groups for essential oils and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's false information. I, if I told my people that they they would do it in the wrong way. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. you yeah. need to understand what you're reading on those searches to know what's the truth and what's you know, what's to be scared of. And, you know, what's false? Well, well my thing. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, that why I was going to kind of segue from there is most of the time people come in and they and they have a lot of complaints, and then sometimes they may think I'm not listening as much, or I'm kind of blowing it off. But it doesn't have that red flag I'm looking for. You know, most of the time things are like I said, common, and then mm-hmm. but not that one target word or one red flag. You know that it really you know, catches my attention. But I will, you know, obviously uh, uh, go through the review of systems and make sure everything's okay. But yeah. um, but for the most part, I think the original question is the most common things I see on a daily basis would be hypertension and diabetes and um, heart failure and depression, uh, dementia, and as the, you know, the high cholesterol is the common problems, but or conditions, but then I also go into, you know, what are the most common causes of headache or chest pain or acute abdominal pain or chronic abdominal pain? And just, you know, and I put in those red flag words, hey, if you have any of these, you know, do see your doctor, but if not, you know, you're probably not going to be a serious condition as you think. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so if somebody comes in and they, they see they got, uh, 
uh, hypertension or something like that. They go to Google and, and Google says this, this, this. What, what exactly, what exactly would you do? Well, I like on, on, and that's great because I mean that that's the most common thing I see. I, I, I talk about hypertension, and you know, usually it's due to genetics or family history. If they, yep. you know, if they get high blood pressure before they're fifty, but if it's after fifty, you know, you have to look for what we call secondary causes. Mm -hmm. But then I tell you what the do what I the doctor am thinking when I choose a particular. You know, we go over you know low salt diet. Um, exercise three hours a week and don't drink too much alcohol. Don't use Advil, Motrin, leave. And if they haven't done all that, and we're putting them on a medicine. You know, I, 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 it's not always as easy as it looks. You know, I, I see if they're older, they're younger, they're white, they're black. Do they have an underlying problem like heart failure or diabetes? And then I explain the class. You know, there's four or five main classes of drugs. And I tell you what why I choose a particular drug and in that situation and maybe just what the one or two most common side effects because like you, you see on all those commercials those oh, are, I don't yes. know how a patient yes. take, yeah. he takes a pill after five minutes of disclaimers <laughs> you're crazy mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I, I, I um I try to fast forward those commercials but one of one of the things one of the things I look at so I went into the doctor and Rachel was with me and she said yeah your blood pressure is really high and then um, went into the doctor and the doctor's like, yeah, your blood pressure is really high. And he put me on. I forgot what it is, but I got to take it once a day. But one of the things I did and <laughs> I Googled it and I looked and what I did, it was a it was a big lifestyle style change. You know, um, yeah, I don't I, I stopped eating potato chips because they're very salty. Um, and Rachel, Rachel cont contested this, too. I look at I, I look at everything as far as um, does it how much sodium's in it, you know, like one of the things is hamburgers, uh, sandwiches. I, I can't eat chips with them anymore because there's too much salt. And right. I, um, I only buy chips that are, um, that are no salt, low sodium. Um, I had to stop using so much ketchup, um, mayo, uh, cheeses, stuff like that. So I changed, I, I really looked at my diet and I'm, like I said, reading labels as far as how much sodium's in it. But then next time I go to the doctor, they, they took my blood pressure and they said, hey, your blood pressure is great. You're keeping it down and all that. I said, yeah, I did a lifestyle change. But one of the things that got, that got me was the doctor didn't say, he was like, well, I can put you on this drug. I can put you on. He didn't say, hey, listen, cut all this stuff out. No more chips, no more. And it's hard, you know, because when you have a sandwich, you, you want potato chips with it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think where the doctors you know, lie with that is, are people willing to change their diets if they talk to them? Because I think it would be better for the doctor to suggest that and say, we can start you with a nutritionist. I think I agree a hundred percent. I, I, I like everything to be done the old fashioned way. So really no matter what, well, most time, no matter what their blood pressure say in this particular instance, I give them two months of, you know, doing exactly what you did and you did the lifestyle change and lo and behold, you didn't need the medicine. And yeah. I think medicine should be in whatever condition, really the last resort. Yeah. But unfortunately at this point in time, a lot of people want, would probably prefer the easy way and take a pill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had to, I had to stop eating hot dogs too, because they're very high in sodium. I make, I, I make, know. And what you said too, ketchup, I love ketchup, but then I, even my stomach, I looked at the bottle and I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah cuz when you, when you have when you have a bur when you have a burger or or something, you know, you you want to put ketchup on it, but it's like Oh god, yeah. I had to I had to cut it down because I was like, okay. Um if I want ketchup, I tried to I I found the no salt ketchup and I looked at the label I'm like, okay, there's no salt. But then the kids you know, were making fries or something like that and they were eat they were um they ate all my ketchup and I said like, you can't you can't have this, <laughs> this because <is> I <laughs> need this because <laughs> but also too when I when I go to like if if I'm you know you know when you get busy you you um break down it's like I got to get something to eat so you go to fast food and I'm like yeah um I'll take some fries but no salt on them I can't have salt on the fries you know right it's 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 a like you said it's a lifestyle you got to stick with it and then give you I said everyone's got to have a cheat day. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. gotta have something to look forward and plus to. I and plus I work out three three you know, three to four times a times a week. So Oh yeah. So I'm keeping my well, that's, 
I'm keeping my body right. But one of one of the things, one of the things I find, like I said, is that you know when you go to doctors, they're like, I can prescribe you this, I can get you this, I can, pro-, and people want, and like you said, a quick fix. People want to take the pills. People want want to take the pills and take all the stuff where it's just like, well, hey, if you and if don't you, want to do the lifestyle yeah, change, if you started juicing, if you started this, this can work with this, this can work with that. You know, like a simple thing of eating eating cashews, you know, unsalted cashews. Oh, you know, right, right. You know, because from what I heard, they're really high in niacin. Well, the problem is with a lot of physicians these days. Uh, I, I see a lot of new patients in my office. They're changing doctors or their doctor retired. The insurance changed or I see them as a nursing home director. I see them there. And with the advent of a lot of nurse practitioners and then and physician assistants and different people, different providers seeing the same patient in a practice, uh, and they just add on medicines. And when I get these, I call, I, we call it polypharmacy. Mm-hmm. There's just too many medications. So I really don't care. When they come to see me, I try to strip them bare bone and say, hey, don't throw away these medicines. And uh, yeah, we'll add them back one at a time. And but, you know, I have to say, as physicians, we, we give out too many medications. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing, too, because I know people who get like um, they get hurt or, you know, they get hurt on the job or they have having back pain or they're having certain pains. And the doctor prescribes them, say, like um, oxycodone or, yeah. or, or um, was that Vicodin? And you get you get the Vicodin and all of a sudden they use it. But my thing is always back in the day, you had to you had to live with the pain just a little bit, you know, to heal. And you had to start walking right. out. But now um, there's there's the old joke, you know, um, you go to the doctors like you say some you tell your friend, hey, I had to go to the doctor the other day. Oh, is everything OK? As of today, it's like, um, hey, I had to go to the doctor. What do you give you? You know, because <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. people want these want these um, these opioids and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like. Okay, if you hurt your back, you're gonna have to get up. You're gonna have to exercise. Um, maybe maybe try yoga for a couple times and to um exercise that back instead of just sitting around taking taking these drugs. Oh, I know. Well, that's been a, another problem, and you know, I think it's nationwide, but I know even like in in Ohio, we are as primary care doctors, we are limited now only for one week's you know um, prescription of a narcotic or an opioid. And, you know, I feel sometimes a bit, you know, I a patient with a compound fracture of their yeah. you know, tibia, fibula, and, you know, they get that. And then you're like, and you're like, hey, I, I would like to get you more. But, you know, you, you get a week and then you got to go back to the conventional method. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For myself, um, when I got diagnosed with a brain tumor, benign, just had radi- radiation on it. But, um I do wish, you know, that people would have more conversations with their doctors. And in your book, I was seeing that you you're interested in that story where a lot of doctors are. okay. I'm here for five minutes and I'm out. I'll diagnose this and give you this and this and goodbye. And you (laughs) (laughs) you're ready for that conversation. Well. I think that's the way I can be, you know, the best physician I can. You, you have to know, you know, that individual. And, you know, they have to be a patient, they have to be a friend. They just can't be a number. Um, and you get to know them and then you, you know, you know, then I get a much better feel also when they are really in pain or, mm-hmm. and, or when they're not. You know, some people are a little have. You know, you have to treat a little more delicately. And there's other people that I know if they come in the office, it's going to be something serious, you know, because they're just not coming in. But, you know, living in Mansfield and my dad was a primary care doctor and I joined his practice. So it's just nice because it's really a family. And I, yeah. I get to love getting to know the grandparents, the parents, the kids, the cousins, the friends. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's just a better way to practice medicine you got to sit down and spend it even though we are pushed for time with each patient um it's just you got to sit down and i think the patients appreciate it well i think a lot of that they don't have i mean even when the doctors are going speed 
zone, they get more into that patient amnesia and not being able to truly <laughs> read the charts before they walk into that room. Right. I like the way you put that. Okay, well let's 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 take a step back, you know, a few years ago. Um I grew up in the seventies and eighties and now one of the things is is that a lot of people had doctors and these doctors knew you from a kid and when you got older they knew you and it used to be a thing where you went into the doctor and it's like, hey, hey, Dr. Johnson, oh, hey, Chris, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And you sat there and you talked with them. How's this going? How's this going? How you been? You know, you've been doing anything. You know? And the doctor got to know you. And then, but now when you get older, um, a lot of people are working jobs that don't provide, that don't provide health care. Or they, or they go to like, they go to like a clinic. And like you said, this doctor doesn't oh, know, yeah. this doctor doesn't know them, doesn't know their history. And they, you know, trying to establish a relationship with your doctor and they're just like, okay, well, you got this, I can give you this, I can, you know, you can prescribe this and boom, on to the next person. But there's no relationship there. There's, there's nobody that knows you, you know, you don't have a primary health care, health care, you know, primary health care uh, doctor. Yeah. And like you said, people, and, and you know, in this generation now, it's, they do want to use uh, urgent cares, which pop up everywhere, it seems, or the emergency room. And then they're doing them a dis, you know, they're both, they're getting an injustice because, yeah, they may be taking care of the sore throat or the sinus infection or whatever, but, you know, they, they're not getting in there and getting the proper vaccines recommended to them. They're not getting the proper cancer screens. And then when you do get sick, instead of having to wait, four hours in the emergency room, you can call up your doctor. They know who you are and you get in that day. And that's mm-hmm. what we do. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's just a little bit more impersonal. Plus, you know, the fact now, uh, most primary care doctors like myself don't work in the hospital setting. So if you got admitted, so when I first came to town, the first 15 years, if you got admitted to the hospital, I was your doctor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I knew you already, knew all your problems, knew your medicines, and I'm the one that took care and made the appropriate referrals and uh, discharged you back to my practice. And, you know, I know everything that's going on where now they have hospitalists yes. and which just take care of you, take care of the patients while they're in the hospital and us primary care and outpatient setting really sometimes are, you know, we're working blindfolded when they come back to the office because a lot of times you haven't even heard what's gone on with your patient. And I agree with that. Um, I agree with that because um, although I love my doctors I work with, you know, the the problem is, is that how do you follow through with that patient to make sure they got that primary that they never had? Yeah. And believe me, the the phone call not to be had. I mean, that's gone out the window. Yeah. Yeah. It's all taxes. It's supposed to be a paperless society mm-hmm. in her office with the new computers, but it's all faxes. It doesn't matter if it's a hangnail or they've had open heart surgery, you just get a fax, which is really a poor breakdown in communication that uh, physicians have these days. And I wanted, I write about this and I, I want the patients to know, you know, my frustrations or what they think is a yeah. seamless uh, a connection is not really the case. And I consider myself a dinosaur now, and, you know, my, my colleagues, my age, we all complain about it. But, you know, the young bucks, you know, that, that's all they know in mm-hmm. the computer. Yep. So what happened to, like, because I remember when, when I was growing up, when I was growing up a kid in South Minneapolis, you know, there was there was a doctor, there was like three or four doctors in the neighborhood right down the street, you know, in a small little, <laughs> right. small little place. I, there was a doctor we used to go to, and I remember his name, Dr. Johnson. And he had a um, he had a practice inside of a house. I was like, "This is a house that was converted into into a medical room." But what happened to those those uh, neighborhood doctors that people could go to? What what happened to all those? Well, as of now, they've um, been bought out. Yeah, there's no longer you know that, and it's so funny. That's like my street too. We had all kinds of doctors here. It's, there was a snowstorm. We were the first ones to get plowed out. But um, uh, what doctors have done? They they're part of corporate America now. They have the big hospital um, conglomerates have come in and bought their practices. Uh, you know, in our area, we have Cleveland Clinic owned uh, from um, um, physicians groups, University Hospitals from Cleveland, Ohio Health from Columbus is here. There's another group called Avita, and they come in, and doctors don't 
want to run a, they, they think it's too hard to run the business and they just come in and no longer have control of their practice and they punch a clock and they, you know, they work from nine to five and go home and don't have to run a practice. And unfortunately you lose that personal touch. You know, you're being with the community controlled by a non-doctor. Yeah. Well, I also think that has to do with because I see my doctors on the unit trying to get that mm, close personal connection, having, mm, you know, with the patient. And if my patient has questions for the doctor, I go tell the doctor. But I think the problem is, is that we have a society where our hires over the doctors, our insurances are saying you need to push patient faster. Yeah. Those are called RVUs, and that just means how you get paid. And basically, you have to get paid by the the more you see, the more you make. Mm -hmm. So what's RVU? What what does that stand for? I think it's a relative value unit. I, you know, that's how we, that's how all doctors bill and code for, for patients. And it tells you like how, if it's an easy visit or a complicated visit, and then that's, you know, it's a mathematical type equation, but the more RVUs, and that's what the hospital and practices do, the more they make. Okay, one one uh, of the things one of the things I saw, and this was this was on a few 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 years ago. I saw on sixty Minutes that NYU their graduate students they they told their graduate students that um, this is no longer uh, this is a tuition free. So these doctors who were in graduate school, yeah. they said we're we're we're, we're fitting a bill. And we're paying for it. So these doctors don't have to get student loans and all that. And one of the things behind that was that they decided to make it tuition free. So some of these doctors can future doctors can go into private practices, can go back into communities and stuff like that. Um, do you think do you see more of a trend like that or, or do you see more of that coming up or because well, like, that would be in the ideal world, that'd be great because, you know, that's the problem you know, with the uh, physicians now, or, or kids who want to become doctors, you know, they've already had to go, you know, through four years of college. And now the expense of medical school is crazy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the average is, you know, you're, you're $200,000, you know, in debt, you know, when you, when you finish, you know, your medical school, and then you have a few more years of residency, three to five, where you're not making really that much money. Yep. So now you're, if you, if you do it all from college to medical school, so now you're like in your low 30s and you're $200,000 in debt. And then you have to pay malpractice insurance, you know, depending what specialty it is, you know, yeah. from 10 to 150000 a year. Like, well, that's just crazy. Yeah. So mm-hmm. a lot of the smarter applicants are like, well, I think I'll try something else. But so if we can get they go you know, for the money, that, go for the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So if they could do more of that and, and get uh, uh, more, uh, the, you know, appropriate people to become doctors, that would be that'd be great. And then they could go into private practice and mm-hmm. uh, and do it more on their own, and then get told by the insurances what medicines they can <laughs> by the insurance company <laughs> and Medicare what, what tests and medicines they can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, oh, well, that's that's another thing I want to I want to look at too is uh, big pharma and big pharma is 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 not just big pharma not just going into the medical industry they also got money to um and and I'm gonna say it they also got money to buy politicians what do you what do you have to say about that Well I know that's a, a, a huge concern and and you know I really um I <laughs> You just try to, you know, listen to everything. You try to make, you know, I, I don't know if I can make heads or tails what's really going on behind the scenes. And mm-hmm. I just got to do my own education and make my own decisions to feel basically which medicines are the best for my patient. Right. Mm-hmm. And that, and that's and that's the thing, too, is that also, too, because like when I um when I work out, I was talking to a personal trainer there at the gym and. She's like, she's like, yeah, people come in and they, they start to, you know, I, I try to train them and stuff like that. She's like, but there's really not much I can do for them. It's like some of the stuff they got, it's like, you know, you got to go see a doctor about this, you know? And, um, right. yeah. And that's the thing too. Cause people, cause I tell people, it's like, you need to, you need to exercise. You need to, you need to train, not train hard, but just getting, um, getting up and walking around like, like our kids that day, it's it's a nice day here in Minnesota. It's a little it's a little cold, but the sun's out and all that. 
our kids are upstairs on their computers and their cell phones. And I'm like, you need to get out of the house and just go walk around, go do something, you know, go get some exercise, just get out of the house, go, you know, cause getting some rays from the sun, getting some of that UV rays and stuff like that from the sun is actually good for you. Get, get out of the house, quit laying around, you know, because that's hurting your muscles, you know? Well, I know, but actually what Rach had said before though, I was thinking like be a nutritionist, you know, for everything, but like, you know, when I first started practicing 30 years for diabetes or say hyper, but especially diabetes, first mm-hmm. thing I did before I gave him anything was get him to a nutritionist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was like, boom, boom, give him a few months again, like you, you did. And, you know, you work on your lifestyle changes, work on your diet. But now they consider that um, uh, the insurances won't pay for the vital thing we need is the nutritionist. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now I can't even send them anywhere. Other than, otherwise, it's out of pocket for that patient. And that's sad and because I, they need that education. That, oh, gosh, yes. That is paramount. Yeah. And uh, so we know, have so a, sometimes hands are tied. Yeah. Well, what about like um, like with people who are like I'm talking people um, who are really, really obese. They may have thyroid cancer and all that. Does insurance cover a uh, gastro bypass now? You have to go through a lot of hoops. Yeah. There is a oh. definite large checklist of failed attempts at diet, failed exercise, failed medications. Then they have to go into a lot of psych testing. And there is a huge checklist, but it's still not as covered as much as I would like. Because I think that's a you know fantastic option for people who just can't maintain, you know, or just morbid obese, mm-hmm. despite all the other measures. So, Dr. Rob, um, for those people that can't see a nutritionist, um, when they're doing their Google searches, um, I would like them to look more there and then talk to you, people like you or read your book. Um, what are some of the highlights of your book for our listeners? Well, I think the highlight of, of the book is that you can understand your own medical condition a lot better. You can uh know why a physician is ordering certain studies for the, you know, for the common problems and actually what those studies mean. Um, I can explain things well in the office, I think, but I know I probably talk too much medical talk, which is Chinese to some, Mm -hmm. even though I try to really do it in layman's terms. So anytime with any common problem you have, you can look in the book as a reference and say, Oh, that's what that hemoglobin A went through. Oh, that's what that PSA is, and you know, for prostate or just and go through it and know why they are taking a particular class of drugs for a particular problem, and go and if you have chest pain, everyone has chest pain, thinks they're you're, they're dying. Go read that section, and you'll see what the you know those um, red flags and you know bells and whistles going off words are, and what are some of the you know, other problems are pretty benign. And I think that's why I wrote it to increase their education, increase literacy, because they're the only ones, you know, you got to take care of your own health and, you know, you have to be autonomous with that because no one else is really looking for it, hoping you, other than your doctor. So you have to be your best advocate. And I would love patients to have questions when they're going to their doctor, uh, maybe brought up in the book to make sure they're getting the standard of care. The whole goal is what is the standard of care of medicine. I don't think patients are receiving it. Is that because they're not getting the right vaccines or the right cancer screens or they're not getting the right medicine for a particular problem? And I think patients can arm themselves with a little knowledge so when they go to that next visit, they can ask some real pertinent questions to their doctor. And, you know, some of my patients have asked questions from my book. And I'm like, oh, you know, stop mm-hmm. Slips through the cracks. I'm not perfect by any stretch. Right. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's good. We should switch this out. You know, just, when you were saying patients get lost in the, um, the room, um, my mom does that notoriously. We've learned to send somebody with her to get the information from the doctor. Cause she gets caught up in the moment of, Oh my goodness, this is happening to me. Oh yeah. It, it's, oh, yeah. Another set of ears is beautiful. And if there's any, serious problem i'm saying hey is there any you know bring your husband or wife next time bring your son or daughter or is anyone out in the waiting room because i want that extra set of ears yeah 
your head will spin like your mom's. Even you know, doctors had to spin. My head spins when I see another doctor. Like, because I always think, you know, I always fear the worst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, doctor. Okay, doctor. Uh, doctor Rob, this has been a great conversation. Um, really enjoyed having you on. Um, the book is Simple Medicine: No More Google Searches by Doctor Rob um, Barquette Jr., M.D. And where can they find this book? Can they get it on Amazon? Can they get it? Oh, yes, you can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndiePal, a bunch of, you know, uh, just private uh, bookstores online. And uh, But that's probably just Amazon and is, seems where most people go. And uh, it's easily found. It's simple medicine, no got more it. Google searches. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Rachel, Rachel, have a link. Now, if, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, if somebody has questions, can you got a website or you got an email or something you, you'd like to um, share with us? Yes. Uh, simplemedicinebook.com you can get hold of me anytime and I'd love to hear for you and answer or my um, my email is malabar m-a-l-a-b-a-r 82 at gmail.com okay and Rachel will have a link in there I will have the links Rachel and Rachel will have the link <laughs> <laughs> Rob I want to thank you for coming on this is so educational and, well I want to thank you guys for having me and had a great conversation and uh, i think uh i'd like to go out and have a little cup of coffee or a few beers with you guys sometime <laughs> sounds great yeah next time <laughs> next time we're in ohio <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were there we were there a few months ago we were there i think was it october or september we were there mm-hmm. yeah we went to the football hall of fame and the um rock and roll hall of fame so yeah too bad we didn't know oh. you because we <laughs> that's <laughs> right that great great spot to visit yes <laughs> All right. Yeah, so. I'll let Rach close this out. And again, Dr. Rob, thanks a lot. Well, thank you. And you guys have a happy Easter. You too, yep. dear. Okay. Oh, and Dr. Mm-hmm. Rob, if you know um, any nutritionists that would like to do the show, please uh, uh, send forward their information so we can get in contact with them. Oh, yeah. I, I can't if I'd even know any anymore. My goodness, they don't <laughs> allow, allow it. But I had Joanne Seaman, boom, tip of my tongue from 30 years ago. That was like right hand woman, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, the, this, uh, and the nutritionists are in the hospital, so, but I don't even oh. do hospital rounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I did think about in the, in the past of actually hiring a nutritionist for my office, but mm. it just wasn't feasible. Right. You know, cause the insurance and everything and oh, they weren't getting God. paid. Yeah. 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 Yep. Exactly. Well, so, uh, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys. Well, we're coming to a close. I want to thank you for joining us. Um, his and Rob and Dr. Rob's links will be in the link. And um, if you're interested in finding out more education, you can always join us on E. Oh, Infusion on Facebook, and we also have our own um, Facebook group. I'll throw those in the links so that you guys can know of upcoming guests. Um, and here we're trying to build lines of love where history is born on lines of hate and trying to make you guys your best advocate until next time. Have a great one. Thank you. Thank you.